Then, um, we do that. So, I'd like to call this meeting to order. It's in exactly 6 or 2 p.m. My name is Nicole Salmono. I am chair of the Publication and Culture Committee. So, uh, we have been on a little bit of a hiatus. We had no uh, meeting in December. So, uh, I'm glad to see everybody back in some new people. So, uh, let me share my screen and then uh, and we'll go to the agenda. Okay, so most all of you got the agenda also already, right? So, yeah. Okay, so I'll share the screen. Okay, can I share my screen? Everybody can see my screen now, right? Yeah. Yes, we can. Do we have a list for the roll call? Um, the number two was roll call. I think I'm going to make a suggestion that we move that after the presentation, even if it took some time to pop in. So, uh, and uh, we'll I'm move. sorry, Nicholas, you're breaking up. Say that again. I think we'll move. Uh, we we'll move two and three after the presentation. Okay, so I just don't want okay. the Department of Transportation. So I'm gonna make a motion that we amend the agenda. Do I have a second? Sure. I, I'm seconding. Okay. Seeing so is there anyone who uh who votes I move for unanimous consent to change the agenda? So, does anybody up there? Seeing none, so the agenda has been modified. Five point two now will change place with the presentation. So, like I said, I like everyone to uh, to do themselves. Let's do the and uh, let's see who we are who we have first today. So, who would like to start? Uh, I don't think we can see the presentation on the screen yet. Oh, you have to let you have no. to let her be the uh, host. The introduction. Yeah, adoption. I will. Uh, he had the agenda up, so I didn't. But I will click the share screen button now. Um, okay, sorry. and I'll take this opportunity. Then I'm Jonine Kidder. I'm the executive director of community affairs and the chief of staff in the division of bridges. Uh, we're here this evening to bring a presentation to you on the Hill Drive Bridge in Prospect Park. And uh, we did present in the month of December to the Brooklyn Bar Board, where we met the representative of Board 9, and you kindly extended us the invitation to be here with you this evening. Uh, Nicole Melendez is um, an engineer, a structural engineer with Parsons Engineering, and she is going to take us through the presentation. After which we will entertain any questions or issues you'd like to discuss with us. And uh, I also want to take a moment to just introduce my colleague, Margie Banka, who is also an engineer in the Division of Bridges, who's here with me this evening. And Margie is the project manager for our Hill Drive project. Now if we're good. Mm -hmm. So, so Nicole, we're ready. Yeah, I want to make sure everybody, one, can hear me, and two, can see the um, presentation on the screen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, All right. Um, okay. I apologize because I have the presentation on a different screen, so if you see the side of my face more than the front, then that's why. Um, so, again, uh, or, or rather, I should say thank you, uh, Janine, for the intro, and thank you to the uh, community board number nine for, the, for your time tonight. So we're going to, I'm going to talk tonight about the Hill Drive bridge rehabilitation. Uh, we've been working on it um, on the design side for quite a bit of time and so now we're excited to present it to you and sort of move on to some of the final stages. Um, so tonight the plan is to cover the project surroundings. We'll talk a little bit, I'm going to talk a little bit about the bridge history and the bridge layout, um, some of the existing conditions on the bridge, the historic uh, architectural features on the bridge, um, and then talk a little bit about the, the scope of work of this project. 
And then we'll get into the construction, some of the construction details a little bit and the project schedule. And you can see the background of this slide, which is um, the park and sort of just back here. It's, it's a little tough to tell, but here's Prospect Park Lake. Um, this is the parking lot where Smorgasburg usually happens. And then back here, just behind the, those bush, those trees is the actual bridge itself that we'll be talking about. Nicole, can I ask you just a quick question? I'm the sure. person taking minutes. Is sure. This presentation like online someplace so that I could use it as a reference or do I have to it is not online um, in the past though we we can provide a PDF copy I think Joni and you you've done that in the past and we've provided copies um, at previous meetings yeah, as so well, let so me, but, uh, I also want to point out this is being live streaming at the same time being uh, recorded so it will be part of our YouTube uh, mi minutes we could always go there to review everything let that's me, happened today mm -hmm. okay. sure, just have a little a little bit of trouble hearing. I apologize for the interruption. Um, I did just want to take a second. I uh, overlooked my colleague from the Brooklyn Borough Commissioner's Office, um, Diana Soriano, who's with us this evening as well. Um, she's muted right now, but I, I didn't want to overlook her. And yes, we can certainly send the board their own copy. Um, I actually thought that Carolyn Church at the Borough Commissioner's Office might have done that after we did the presentation there, but I'm happy to send to the board um, a copy of this presentation. Yeah, that okay. would be helpful. Thank you. That'd be helpful. Much sure. appreciated. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. And thank you, Joe. I'm sorry, whoever that was broke up. Oh, it's Diana. I was just said thanks, Joe. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay, so I will uh, carry on here. So the the bridge you can see here this is a plan view of the park itself overall and so the bridge is on the southern end of the park um it's the th the road over on the bridge provides access over the prospect park lake and it's a pedestrian thoroughfare that connects the east side of the park to the west side of the park so here on this plan view here on the right you can see the different entrances and exits to the park um, and where the bridge is relative to the park as a whole so I mentioned some of the bridge history. Right now, the existing structure is owned by New York City Parks Department. Um, the last major rehab on the bridge was actually in 1930, so 90, almost 95 years ago. Uh, the park itself as a whole was designated as a New York City landmark uh, in 1975, and the bridge was closed to vehicular traffic in 2009, and I'll get into some of the reasons why a bit further in some of the later slides. So. The existing structure, you can see here, we've got an elevation of sketch of the bridge. So you can see uh, it crosses over the lake. There are two footpaths. And let me know if you guys can see my mouse, but there are two footpaths underneath the bridge um, down here on either side of the lake. And then the two spans, it's a three span, technically a three span structure. So the famous arch span is actually the second center span. And then on each side opposite of the arch are these um, encased masonry walls, which actually are spans that are inaccessible and have been inaccessible and the interior of which have been inaccessible since the original construction. Um, so some of the current existing notable deficiencies on the bridge, like I mentioned, there are load restrictions because the bridge has been closed to vehicular traffic. There were some severe, or I should say, some steel section loss um, noted in the northwest corner of the bridge due to some inadequate drainage for decades and water pooling there and, and sort of slowly deteriorating some of the steel there. So close to vehicular traffic. There are asphalt cracks. Um, you can see them here. If you're walking over the bridge, you can see cracks in the, the asphalt there and vegetation has started to grow up through that. Um, both the underside of the, the bridge deck and the pier walls here have some deteriorated brick, which also includes some of the timber shielding. If I'm sure you're all familiar with that, that timber that's installed up there to protect from any deteriorated brick or issues there. Um, the, the paint system all over the bridge is failing. Um, and there over here on the wind walls, there's some erosion of the soil after all these decades where now you're starting to see some of the exposed rubble foundation there. And some of the historic features on the bridge, 
this parapet here, uh, cast iron, it's cast iron on that center span, and then it is it switches, the material switches to a stone parapet on the first and third spans, the, the two outside spans, uh, but mimics the same shape. Um, and then we've got these spandrel panels, which appear on the right-hand side, top right, you can see this was actually original to the bridge uh, when it opened in 1890. And then after that 1930 rehab, it was swapped out for this filled in panel um, that you can see down here on the bottom right. There are um, these medallions here, which one side of the bridge says 18, the other side of the bridge says 19 to indicate the year that the bridge opened to the public. And then there are these decorative um, infill panels at the bottoms of, of the arches at each of the girder lines. Um, so some of our, in, ter in terms of the scope of work of this project, the, I'm oh, sorry, let me close that. The, the plan for the project is to replicate these brick jack arches, which is the underside of the deck, which you can see down here in the, uh, the bottom left corner picture. Um, the goal in the original construction, they served a structural purpose um, in our, in our proposed design, they won't serve structural purpose anymore, but the goal is to replicate the, the look of the bridges or the look of the jack arches there. Um, we will be replacing all of the steel here, so all of the stringers, all of the floor beams. Um, and then additionally, the, the deck up top on the top of the bridge would all be replaced. Uh, the, the girders, the, the actual steel girder, arch girders would all be replaced. And then the bridge railing system, which I mentioned this parapet system would all be repaired and, and upgraded to uh, current standards. Um, so the additionally, uh, there will be lead remediation work on the bridge. We've taken several samples of, of different materials all over the bridge and identified where the lead remediation will be required. So we've got between the, the assorted coating systems from decades ago where that was a typical coating and some other materials. So all that would be included in the remediation effort and the proposed work. And so we've got this animation. Um, I am going to play it, but it, will sh it shows the... Um, the demolition scheme and then the uh, construction scheme as well. So you can see all of this in this and I'll talk to it, speak to it as it's playing here. But so this is the existing structure, which you can see half of it closed off, obviously, for the, uh, as I mentioned, closed off to traffic. And so the bridge will be closed to pedestrian traffic. We start to demolish the bridge. Um, let's see that deck coming off and the, the fill coming off so that the existing steel is exposed. So that entire span would be removed and the two outside spans would be repaired, rehabilitated, filled in. And then we'd come in with the new span and construct that new center span with all the new steel. Build the new deck. And then have that open. The completed structure would be open to traffic. Open to folks, I should say pedestrian traffic. So this slide shows the, you know, while the bridge is um, under construction, the anticipated alternate pedestrian routes. Um, you've got the routes up to the north over the Low Water Bridge and the bridge um, just north of that, and then the, the southerly, southernly most route that loops here around the lake. Um, so on this slide, we're showing what we anticipate as a proposed staging area for the contractor. So we've got highlighted here the area that would be the limits of the actual work. And then this here just to the west, um, you know, you guys, I'm sure are very familiar with the park, but there's this sort of flat level area just to the west of the bridge approach. And, and that's where we would, ex would propose for a staging area for the contractor. Um, and then just to speak to schedule a little bit, we've got our preliminary design, which is largely wrapping up now. Um, with final design anticipated pretty soon in terms of early 2024 and would extend for a little over a year, about a year and a half. Uh, and then the anticipated new construction would start in 2026 right now. And we're expecting a construction duration of 18 to 24 months. Um, and something I didn't mention before, but this, the, the funding for this construction is coming entirely from city parks funding. So, and the anticipated cost right now is 20 to 30 million or 28 to $30 million. Um, so that is what 
we had for a presentation. Um, if anybody has any questions, happy to speak to any questions or anything anybody has. Yep, I have questions. Sure. I, why don't we make it easy? If you want to ask questions, you could either use the raise and question and let us know so we could do it. Could I, could I also just ask, since, um, since we're just meeting most of you for the first time, could you just say your name just before you ask the questions so I can make sure I get them down correctly? Oh, yes. I concur. I wanted us to do that before we present it. So go ahead. Well, you said you have a question. Am, am, am I being am I being recognized now? Yes, you are. Okay. It's hi. It's Julia Bryant. Thank you so much for coming out in the evening to make a presentation to us. Um, my first question is, um, when does this street the street get closed off? It's we're not. It doesn't get closed off until twenty twenty six. Correct. Well, the, actual, yeah. The, yeah, the actual bridge has been closed for an extended period of time due to the deterioration. So, yes, it would be closed for our purposes in early 26. Oh, I see. So, okay. So, when I go past it, I just think it's closed for the day, but it's been closed. Uh, it's continue. been closed. Right. It's been closed. The only vehicles, to our knowledge, that have been on there um, are Parks Department vehicles, which we also have not encouraged, um, but the Parks Department has tended to use only the smallest vehicles to travel over the bridge. Okay, and then my secondary question is, um, it said that the funding was coming from parks. Ha is that funding in place? Um, do, what my, my basic question is, is it a possibility that the funding gets, because the city's in peril, that this project gets started and the funding doesn't continue on and we're stuck with a half finished bridge? The answer to that, I would say with some good confidence is no. Uh, so I probably should just give you a couple of sentences on why the Department of Transportation is coming to you about a Department of Parks bridge. Um, under an agreement that at this point is probably more than 20 years old, uh, the New York City DOT constructs all of the Parks Department's bridges for them. Uh, we also do a substantial amount of the repairs. There are certain trades that the Parks Department does not have, iron workers and other trades that Parks doesn't have in-house. And so they fund uh, those repairs to us and we perform them for them. We also, as I said, manage their entire bridge capital program for them. Uh, Parks is fully involved in reviewing our designs. Uh, Christian Zimmerman and the folks from Prospect Park have seen the presentation and they're aware of the work we're doing. And the bridge, and just to go back to the um, go back to the funding, the funding is in place right now in the capital budget under this FMS ID number. And short of um, some kind of disastrous emergency the funding would not be removed once it's put in place. Not to say that if something catastrophic happens, it couldn't be paused, but there is no real possibility that I could foresee that construction would begin and then the funding would be removed. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Anybody? I didn't see anybody's hand. I do have a question. Go ahead, Bill. Please introduce no. yourself and your affiliation. Yes, thank you so much. My name is uh, Bill Elliston. Um, I just noticed on the um, the slide where you showed the staging area for the contractor, that was just to the west of a pathway that leads from the well house uh, restrooms up to the Nethermead. Is there a plan to keep that open so that people can easily use the, that northern or you know the two northern routes that you propose as an alternative? Do you want to go back to that slide, Nicole? Yeah. Is that helpful, sure. Mr. Allison? Yes, that'd be great. It looks like that was thought about. I just wanted to make sure that somebody mentioned it. 
So yeah, you're referring to this pathway here, and, and it's a similar. Uh, we got the same question with the Brooklyn board, uh, or sorry, the Brooklyn community, or the borough board, um, a few weeks ago. I think Joni, I think feel free to correct me, but the idea is that this is what we're proposing right now to um, Prospect Park Alliance, um, and then we would let them ultimately make the decision. But certainly with your considerations in mind. I'm sorry. Is yeah, that I is what we're saying that that green square is just a little too big and needs to go slightly to the left to keep the path? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's something we'd need to, and you know, if this is their staging area, they're going to be going back and forth. So a co we just need we just need to make sure that the contractor is aware that this is something that wanted to remain open or provide some alternate means around it. I know this is there. This is a steep embankment, so it's not <laughs> we can't just draw a line here and say go this way instead. But but just bearing that in mind that that's access that that folks would like to maintain yeah. so i only pointed point. it out because it's the the northern route that you suggested as an alternative route if you cut that particular path off you cut that alternative route off that detour so yeah that's the only reason i raised the question For no sure. that's a very good that's a very good point and um i think we'll take that back again nicole's making a good point that between the green square and the bridge the contractor would be moving and so for certain we could certainly include it that in periods when the contract is not working that they would cordon that off and make that path available so I, because i assume the largest use of that path would be weekends holidays and and times like that and when he's working midday it probably would be something where we could either have a flagger available to let people pass while the contract is working or work out some other means to actually keep that path open and safe at the same time. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions? Well, I do have one question. Uh, we learned that for work in the park, there's always usually a schedule for capital improvement. How come it's taking so long to get that bridge fixed? Anybody have any idea? I'm sorry, could you just restate that? I, I didn't quite understand it. We find out that most uh, park structures are, are on a schedule for capital improvement. Based on what you say, a presentation, the last time they did with this particular bridge was in the 30s. Do you know why it took so long? For them well, to so yeah, I want to clarify. There have been improvements certainly since the 30s that's not to say that since the since 1930 nothing has happened but the last major you know this i think it was a, i believe it was a deck replacement a full deck replacement in in 1930 um so it, it was the last major sort of um rehabilitation of the bridge but there absolutely have been improvements or or things since then uh, in terms of why why there hasn't been something major that I, I don't i can't speak to but there has certainly been work on the bridge since 1930. So I can I can give you just a little more information without being very specific. Um, I joined the Division of Bridges about 15 years ago, and this bridge was in the capital program then. Um, my understanding, again, somewhat anecdotally, but I could try to dig up more detail for you, was that this bridge has been in the capital program, but it went through two cycles of kind of issues with capital project availability. We did come through two periods um, in the 90s and in the mid 2000s, one in particular during the Bloomberg administration where many, many projects were pushed out uh, of the capital program. And this was one of them. It had started design as long as 15 years ago. And with the uh, budget selections that the parks department had to make, the parks department prioritized other projects in their capital program because our bridges are in the same capital program for them with uh, their locker rooms, structures, pools, uh, you know, comfort stations and all of their other infrastructure. They have a tremendous amount in a capital inventory. And so they chose to defer this project. It, it has been deferred in my own experience for probably about 15 or more years. It's been waiting. Uh, but now they are fully committed uh, to moving it ahead and bringing it back to, you know, it's really a spectacular bridge. It is landmarked. 
and we have been working with landmarks as well, as Nicole said earlier, to bring it back to that actual beauty of what it once was. And I, and I will add, I literally about 20 minutes ago just saw two people from the Landmark Preservation Committee and was telling them that we will be having another, a very good conversation about this bridge shortly. <laughs> I hope, uh, that, I hope that gives you a little context. Is I hope that was helpful. Yes, I found that that was helpful because because the reason I'm Very saying helpful. that we have a situation with one of our community gardens been 20 years trying to get it done. It seems to be something similar has been happening. They just keep putting certain up. I'm glad. So I think uh, we're going to try to do our diligence to keep the people their feet to the fire to make sure this does not happen and that which is completed. That's the reason. And I think that's what we do as a community, but to advocate to make sure those particular structures that serve our community are fully funded and fully operational in a safe and efficient manner. Understood. Um, it may not be of particular reference to Community Board 9, but we had a very similar situation with two pedestrian bridges that are in construction right now that belong to the Parks Department down on the Belt Parkway. Uh, the one is at 17th Avenue near the uh, Verrazano Bridge, and the other one is at 27th Avenue, closer to um, uh, Cropsey Avenue. And both of those bridges have been in the capital program for as long as Hill Drive. And they were also victims of real difficult budget decisions that the Parks Department had to make. And actually, they're both in construction right now and hopefully will be finished either in late 24, early 25. So the money is flowing for the Parks Department bridges. And I hope it's someday to invite Board 9 down to a ribbon cutting for those two new bridges down there on the Belt Parkway. Thank you for the invite. So we'll sure to take you up on that, absolutely. Uh, are there any questions for the DOT? Uh, why do you have you there? I just want to raise a question um, with a structured deal, but you say you're only working in bridges. Is there any, who do you know within DOT deal with uh, pedestrian plaza? Because we have a pedestrian plaza that just finished and that we could not find anybody who's taking care of it. Uh, Diana, maybe from our borough commissioner's office can help you with that. Mm -hmm. Would okay. you mind uh, repeating the question again, please? The question is, uh, there's a there's a DOT just completed a pedestrian plaza at Empire and uh, Franklin Avenue, and uh, mm -hmm. we've been trying to engage DOT to find out what they're going to do with the plaza. I don't have we because we're thinking we thought it was park originally, but the park commissioner said no, it's DOT. Do you have any additional information you could give us on that so we could advocate to really make this plaza well functional for the community. Got it. Um, I can email Dante and yourself later with more with more information about the plaza. All right, I appreciate it. No problem. Okay. So just before we close, um, I did want to just reiterate that this is the end of preliminary design. And when, as Nicole said, when we are finished with what we consider to be final design, Community Board 9 will be part of a mass mailing from DOT announcing that we are at essentially 90% design. We can come back to Board 9. We will be required to come back to the Borough Board uh, as well as we did in December. We'll be happy to come back to Board 9 again at that point and bring you a final product. Okay, we look forward to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. If there are any uh, things you think of after we all sign off, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out through Keith Bray's office and Diana and bring us our attention and we'll be happy to get you some information. And I made a note to send a presentation over to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Mm -hmm. All right. Good night. Good night. Hey, let's switch back over to our business. So uh, if we want to go back to, I'll share my screen again, we'll go back to the agenda. Okay. All right. So uh, why don't we go with our uh, roll call? Julia, you want to proceed for us? 
I don't have a list of a roll call, but um, um I can, yeah, I this, have a yeah. okay. Could, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, uh, Patty. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. Maria Acosta. Not here. I'm going to say uh, Celeste Chase. He's... I'm here. Okay. Courtney um, Luzel. I'm here. Paul Pascal. I'm here. Julia Bryant. Here. Gloria Briggs. Not yeah, I'm not seeing her. Brenda Pagan. Here. David uh, Romero. Romeo. R O M E O. David Romeo. Okay. Yeah, okay, they put it different in the agenda. Okay, I'll change that. Um Stephen Samaho? Shimamoto. Is he here? No. John St. Bernard? Not here either. Mm -hmm. David Walters? No, I don't see David either. Naomi Wood? N Naima. Naima. Here. All right, thank you. Anybody else? I think that's all of us, right? What's the yes, that's everyone. Okay, and what's the count? We want to make sure we have a call. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I and and you. And myself. Seven. Yes, that makes seven. We do have a call. So, yes. Okay. We've Thank made you very much. Yeah, we made call. Okay. So let's move to minutes. Everybody had a chance to see the last minute. It was set along with uh, the agenda. Do you, let's see if we can. Are they, do you guys want to make any changes to that? I can try to. This is Celeste. I do want to make one change. I'd ask to be excused, and I'm not showing her all on the minutes. Oh, oh I'm okay. sorry. That's uh, okay. Right. Well, that's the reason. We only have any other ch any other changes after you guys let the minutes. So uh, I'd like to make a, mo a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? A second. I second. I second it. All right. Seconded by uh, or seconded and third by Julia Wyatt and David Romeo. Yeah. Is there any objection to the minutes? I move for unanimous consent for approval of the minute. Any abstention? Seeing none. Minutes been approved. Now we're going to move to public commentary. Is there anybody who likes to make some public commentary? Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> anything else? I, I mean, anything you, I mean, please let's talk about the concern, I, greetings, and whatever. What do you I, wish for us? I, I would like to make a just a, a statement that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that CB9 should vote no on the city of yes, all of the, the amendments, they are not in favor of our community. Okay. Well, uh, my public comments, if anybody else, is there anybody else before I go on? Uh, my commentary is that I want to congratulate our member Naya Wood on a successful uh, show with Atonin's Watercolors. 
And I think uh, this is the kind of activity where we are looking for from the community to bring a lot more of that. If you didn't have a chance to go to see it, you miss a great, great show. And we're looking for more and more of that to come. Thank you. And thank you for those of you who uh, participated and came to the event and came to the exhibit. Um, it was a wonderful time, and I am working on a new exhibition that will open in February. So I'll share more details about the next exhibit once it's been finalized. Courtney, you know, see you raise your hand if you want to add something. Oh, no, I was just doing the little clap reaction. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so uh, let's move, let's go back to the agenda. Okay, is there any more, Brenda, anything? You didn't want to add anything else in commentary? Okay, so now let's move on to cultural institution liaison report. With that, uh, I'm going to do this. Um, because, uh, this more or less identified a different uh, connection that this community has. So I don't know who would like to start and give us an update what's going on. I, I'll go first. Um, I have um, uh, BBG and BBG said that there's nothing new. The light show is a success as usual mm -hmm. um, and that not to expect anything new from them until um the spring. Oh, okay. So there's nothing for it to look for. Uh, however, I do want to add. I I do want to add that um at this time the uh, botanic garden is free um for anybody all all the time. You don't have to ask for a um a community ticket or anything. So but it's not. Next, uh, Brenda. Yes. Um, Bill is here from Prospect Park Zoo. Mm -hmm. And I will defer to him for any update. Yes. Thank you so much, Brenda. And it's good to see everyone. Um, I have no... Uh, meaningful updates for Prospect Park Zoo. We're continuing to go through um, rehabilitation. We still have generators on site and we're working to um, get, you know, permanent hardwire power in. Um, so that will happen um, hopefully soon. Um, and I will reach out to everyone as soon as I have any like, you know, real updates for, um, you know, for major news. Um, I do like coming and saying hi to everyone. Wow. We happy. So here. the zoo is still closed? Is the zoo, the zoo still is, closed? The zoo is closed um kind of until further notice. Uh, we have no um no exact date for reopening at this point. Um we have a number of uh funding scenarios. Uh, I believe we qualified along with um uh, the Alliance and the um, Botanic Gardens, and I believe there are some um, small business association components um, but, uh, for FEMA funding, so we're waiting for signatures on that. Um, and when all of those things uh, are executed, then we'll have more information. Um, but the zoo's closed indefinitely at this point, uh, with plans to reopen. I should be clear about that. We are planning to reopen. Okay, thank you, Bill. And we're going to make sure you get notified uh, with uh, our meeting. Yeah. But oh, I wanted to. Sorry, if I could just add one more thing. Um, we are still doing our best to maintain community connections. So um, I don't know that I can stay on for um, some of the things that are later on the agenda. But if people want to reach out, directly to me or through Brenda to me um, to talk about, you know, different events. Like I know the community board nine had a um, um, 
a fair last spring um, that I think was in front of, uh, like between the high school and um, Botanic Gardens. Um, if there are things like that, or you know, I know Maple Street uh, Community Garden will start to do things in the spring again too. I don't know what we can offer, but um, if if there is something that we can do, I'd be uh, excited to contribute to different events, um, either through staff or um, you know tickets to give away to families or things like that. So if, if events are starting to be planned, please feel free to reach out and I'll see what I can do through our government affairs team. Oh, well, that's great because we do have a lot of events that are being planned. I could say for now, the resource fair has already been talked about. It's definitely going to take place. So start reserving the date for that. Should be that last weekend before the weekend before Memorial Weekend, which should be the time. So, so I will, will communicate to Ben that let you know whatever we're going to we'll see how we could help out. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to Courtney, Prospect Alliance. What's going on with them? Courtney. Courtney. I say Courtney. I'll take it back. Courtney. Um, there, uh, so for the, uh, for Prospect Park Alliance, um, there will be a Shirley Chisholm Welcome Center Community Workshop coming up on January 17th. Um, it is both in person and via Zoom. So it's going to be at Medgar Evers College and on Zoom. Um, besides that, I think most of the news has been about the city budget and, you know, how it affects the parks. Um, but um, other than that, I don't think there's any other updates. Yeah, I think I did attend the last meeting. Also, I just saw an email where they are responding a lot of the park workers in the budget, which is pretty good news. Because, uh, so, uh, but I just, there's something I wanted to tell uh, Bill and I completely forgot. If you, I think I would like to suggest if, if you cannot attend the meeting, can you suggest somebody else that could attend? And also, since you are an organization within the community, you, the prospect, are look, uh, you are eligible to become members of that community. So the requirement is that you don't have just leave, you have to work within the community, the purpose, you can designate somebody. So they'll be part of our community with full privileges of what the Apple community resident member. So think about that. I think we made that proposition last year, uh, but hopefully that's something you guys can think about and have a designated person. If you can come, somebody else can come. That is, and then you guys will have full word on what we're doing there because it's part of the community. Thank you. Yes, uh, I will. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay, let's see who's next. Uh, community gardens. I I don't know. I, I spoke to Gloria a couple of days to get an update on what's happening with first. The one I was hoping for to get the meeting, so we could probably pick up that one next. Um, David Romeo, anything you 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 like to talk about? No, um, I was unable. I, I haven't reached out to. Um... Miss Morgan yet. I'm mm. hoping to invite her to make a presentation to us mm. uh, on behalf of the Friends of Wingate Park to tell us what's happening with their projects because, you know, um, we heard that uh, the the fourth phase of the project has been, you know, um, cancelled because yes. um, yes. of the loss of some money. So, you know, I'm hoping to speak with her so she could probably, you know, attend a meeting and, and you know bring us up to date as to you know what's going on with the projects in in terms of um Wingate Park and what plans they have or what or how we could help or what we could do you know in terms of you know seeing that the fourth phase is finished. David have you been calling her and not, and she's not calling you back? No 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 I no I know that that that's not the issue. I fell down on that to be honest with you. You know, so um, I was supposed talk. to. I didn't have but, a chance because I have I, I have her number and she sends she's sending out emails so. She she's uh... right. You know. Okay. The, the the last time I spoke with her, um, she she said that you know she's sending emails to, you know um the community board main office etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But I, you know, I, I just think it's it's going to be so much 
easier for her to at least make a presentation to to the to this committee, so you know we could have a discussion. Mm-hmm. You know, um, in just you know, in just sending emails back and forth, come in like you know the other gr- groups come in and tell us what's going on and. Well, I, I would say if I put it so low, it may be a little sensitive because she used to chair this committee when she was in the board. So she's right. Well, mm-hmm. I, I am that. aware. So uh, mm-hmm. let's keep doing the which out. She's, well, I, as far as I'm concerned, she was welcome to come back here and help us as much as she can. And, uh, mm-hmm. and there are some activities I'm going to be proposing for this committee where we're really going to need her participation fully in there. Absolutely. So um, everybody had asked me to send them the park assessment tool for the neighborhood parks. Mm-hmm. Did everybody get it? Has anybody been able to use it? Or do they have any questions? I think this is the time to talk about it. Uh, specific, Celeste, have you had a chance to go over it? No, unfortunately, I'm just coming off of COVID. OK. Mm-hmm. All righty. Anybody, anything else? Any? Did I miss anyone? Yes, I wanted to give an update on Brooklyn Museum. Okay. So we have been working with the community engagement director to schedule a museum visit for the committee. And we are limited to the hours that the museum um, it will be open. So they're open Wednesday through Sunday from 11 to 6. So I know that may be a little bit challenging to get the group together to decide um, what day and what time we should meet for the museum visit. As an alternative, the museum's willing to give each one of us two tickets to visit the museum, you know, based on our availability. However, I do think it would be fun if we could go as a group, especially since right now they've got um, a couple of really exciting exhibits. So the Spike Lee exhibit goes on now through February 11th. And then the Dean Extended. Oh, it's been extended? Yes. So what's the new date? Despite despite Lee, um, I I I can't say you know I heard it on the news yesterday or the day before yesterday, but I know the Spike Lee exhibit has been extended. Okay, so right now they have yeah. on the website that it goes until February eleventh. So if it's extended past then, then we'll mm-hmm. see the update. And then the Dean collection, that's Alicia Keys and Swiss Beats private collection. That's scheduled to open on February right. 10th, February 10th. So I think it would be exciting to see either one of those exhibits or both of them if we so if we were to go on the 10th, we could see both. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, Is this our next meeting day? Let's see. <laughs> No, I think yeah, I, February tenth. <laughs> see, I don't think that's I, a meeting date, is it? Our next meeting date will be February the eighth. Yeah, so the tenth, yeah, the tenth is on a Saturday. So mm-hmm. I wanted to find out from you all uh, what you thought was possible. Like, what do you think is possible? A group or individual meetings or visits? I would prefer to go because one of the things we're trying to do is to see if we could have a meeting over there at the museum. Yeah, I don't think that's possible. And so if that's not possible, then, uh, but I think still as a group, because I think I would love to see a meeting outside Zoom. So, and I'm probably <laughs> going to encourage most of the, commi- uh, most of the uh, of institution we engage with to come and have a meeting at their place. I know we could try to do that with uh, the Brooklyn Botanical Garden because they're the facilities. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, there are some of the facilities eventually in the future, we'll meet there. So we don't know what the problem is. But that was the plan to really go over there, see the exhibit, then have our meeting, 
And I think we're going to try to do it Thursday. And I think participate in another activity that's in the museum. Usually on Thursday, they tend to stay a little later than normal. Yeah. So since she she said they closed at six, so I don't know if like the Thursday night salsa is still going on, but um, maybe as an as an alternative, we could meet at the museum on Thursday. We would have to meet around four o'clock so we could have two hours to see um, the exhibit. And then is there another location we could meet after the museum? It to have mm -hmm. our meeting? Well, I think we could try to look and find a community organization that's willing to have the space because I'm even thinking maybe on there, we, if we've got a space like at the uh, Major Owen Center, some other place to do that because I know the youth committee the last time they had their last meeting at a school with a potluck dinner, which was pretty good. So, uh, this is some of the ideas. If you guys have any ideas, but the major that. Owens, I, 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 excuse me for jumping in. Um, mm -hmm. The major Owens Center is far from the museum, and now it's a thing. Okay, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, I I'd, I'd like to propose that we do two things: that we meet as a group and see the show as a group mm -hmm. at a time that's open for the museum. Mm -hmm. and then have our meeting as regularly scheduled. Okay. And in that way, we get two things, you know, we get our our business done and we get to see the show for free. Okay. Why don't we uh, put that uh, in our business section and we'll make it a motion much later. So let's move on to the agenda. Okay. Let's make a note that we're gonna to have to make a motion about the different propositions for that. So we'll move okay. that. So, so let me get back to the agenda because I think we'll cover everybody. And uh, I'm trying, uh, if, if you guys need help, since we need more institution, we're missing some of the sports and recreation activity in the community. I think I would urge everyone, if you can have some relationship with some of these activities of sports organization to bring them into this particular committee to, to help us uh, expand our coverage of what we should be doing with this committee. Okay, let's see. No, that's not it. So there we go. Okay. Now, uh, issues and concerns. Attendance and committee membership. Uh, we, we are not the only committee that has been having this problem. So there are people that have been nominated to this committee, have not attended since they've been uh, assigned to the committee. So the general board is deciding to have some of these people removed. And uh, there was an email I have to send back. I have to respond to the district manager of which of these people should be removed as part of the So to go to, let's put it this way, we fight them for removed proceedings. So there's no guarantee they'll be removed, but we have to do it in a, with a due process way. So yes. uh, consistently, the people that made the list was the people, uh, I think it's Paul Pascal, Acosta and uh, Steven Shimamoto and one of our community resident member. I know I've spoken a few times with uh, Johnson Bernard. So I'm going to be responding to that email and ask them. Because of that, we're going to be, I'm going to urge if you have somebody who's interested in doing this work, to let me know so we could backfill those people, those with community resident members. So that way we could always have a good group of people in call. And that's the same reason I was extending this suggestion to Bill if you have somebody from the zoo. That way we could keep membership of this committee at a healthy number. Okay. Is it so is that uh, can I ask can I ask a question? Sure. Mm -hmm. My question is if we've never seen these people. Mm -hmm. What action can this committee do to just like make a vote and say, we would like to have the 
community board, the executive committee, remove these people from our list, period. I mean, you know, like, and then, and, and then, you know, I know that they don't get removed, you know, like flat out, they get, they get a chance to cure Mm -hmm. and and explain themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, And then they, you know, and then they get to to show up again. Um, I would like to start that process with all the people that are on that list. I, that list was sent around by the community board. I looked at that list carefully. Mm-hmm. I'd never seen any of those people on our community, in, in our committee. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. um, it, you know, they just slow us down because um, it makes it harder for us to have a quorum. If, mm-hmm. they're, if they get counted, we could have, True. We could have a quorum every time. Every time. Mm-hmm. Well, I will let's put that in our vote at the end of the session because I myself am going to ask them to do it because it's, uh, because they asked me as a chair to recommend to send a recommendation. So I could say I will make a motion that the chair recommend that these people be in the community and then and we'll go from there. Okay. Are there any is there anyone who would like to chime in in this particular part? No, what's what's the process? Just contacting them? Well, they want to contact them by phone, by mail, certified mail, and let them know to see if they have certified mail, it. really? Yeah, it's done very formally because these people were nominated by the borough president. So then he had then he has to go to the borough president and ask them to take action. Mm. Okay. So but I, I concur with you. We'll make the recommendation. Mm-hmm. And and the, because the what I have is the ability to appoint people, so I could appoint as many community resident members to backfill the spot. So, so that way we could always have enough people for quorum. So that's why I'm asking if you think of somebody who knows interested in doing this work, let me know. So well, I'll mm-hmm. but but to finish a- answering the question, it mm-hmm. is they get a they get a certified letter. And then they are asked to appear at the um, the general it, at at the general meeting, mm-hmm. um, and um, then they explain themselves, and then they get voted off, on or off, mm-hmm. at the executive board. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to bring the subject again. What is the, I'm not too clear about the procedure at the executive committee coming up next week. I will bring that subject to that. So the process is clearly. Explain in the United so at our next meeting, I'll report on that. Okay. Well, I'm just saying that that's how it is, and mm-hmm. if you if you wait for another month, then it's one more month to harder. I to... think this is the first. I've been this community board for the last three years. This is the first time this is being done in a systematic manner before. Before that, nothing was done. Yes. No, that's not true. That's not I've true. Been, uh, since I've been here, so I'm not saying that. Okay, exactly. Nicholas, I'm just saying I've been to meetings where people got voted off and where they have to beg for their little lives and they, they look all sad and you never wow. seen them before. You never see they they come in, they 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 say why they haven't been, oh their mother's been sick, oh it's been really sad, and then they don't show up at the meeting again. Mm-hmm. So I, I, mean, I don't know what I don't know what the scam is, I don't know what the shenanigans is, uh, but it they, they okay. get the letter, they show up. They tell the little story, and then you never see them again. Mm, okay. Well, we we'll probably have to. Uh, I've been, I, 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 and I've been and I've been on this committee for six years. So yes, well, I have <laughs> more more longer than I have been. So let's. Uh, is there anybody who um, want to move on? Are there any discussion about this particular thing? No. This particular. Okay. So uh, now. I'd like to move on to the planification for fiscal year 2223. I'd like to talk about what activities we're gonna we have to expect from the community garden. Because normally the community garden usually will have an opening and harvest day, is there anything else? So we would like to help out and to be part of that as much as possible. Uh, I think Brenda is the only person in the community garden that's here today. So let's see. If not, can we propose some uh, suggest some suggestive activity for those gardens? No. 
Those gardens belong to them. Let yeah. them come back to us. We should not be planning for anybody else. Right. You're not going to do the work. I'm not going to do the work. Okay. So then uh, we should anticipate if they have any activity, they'll contact us and we'll help out as much as we can. Yes. Generally, yes. And right now it's winter. Mm -hmm. So the gardens are at bed, asleep. In, right. in bed. <laughs> and because it's all volunteer, a lot of them don't do long-term advanced planning. But for the garden that I'm familiar with, most familiar with, the timing and the events will be similar because I keep saying it over and over again. Mm -hmm. The garden's going to open that first weekend in June or thereabouts. Actually, officially, the gardens open in April, but they aren't necessarily going to have an event in April because the weather is still iffy. But by June, things are all revved up. And it's, for Maple Street, a similar schedule to what it was the past two or three years. First weekend in June, opening opening events, and Green Thumb always has an open gardens event. So that happens citywide. And the, all of the gardens are aware of it, but they don't all participate. And after that, there's a harvest festival. Those are the two definite events that go on in the gardens. Now, beyond those, the gardens can plan any other events that they would like to have. So the, the soonest you're probably going to get a schedule from them is April, maybe May. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. That's I think it. we lost Nicholas for the time being. Oh, okay. Oh, you, you lost me for a little bit. I have to attend to something, but I'm back. But I think what we should do is to keep that in our calendar, looking forward to what is it, the harvest days and all that other stuff. So, well, uh, that's the what opening I'm events. Gonna you come at the same it? time as the CB9 event up at Eastern Parkway. Oh, it's usually happen in May, so that the Memorial Weekend. So they open Memorial Weekend. The weekend and, uh, after. The weekend after, and then they close the one what uh, late September. No, the garden gardens are open until November. Until Maybe. November, okay. All right, so because I'm trying to see if we could put together a program, uh, I mean, some kind of a calendar of activity that we have to pay attention to. So we'll, we'll talk more, I suggest we talk more about it at subsequent meeting. So if, uh, if, if you were talking about the community board fair that we had that, yes. Well, that's the next thing because the last executive board asked us to start talking about it. And that's okay. The then I, I, I have I have some serious input on about it. Last okay. year was was a bust. It was terrible. It was horrible. It mm -hmm. was a waste of money. It was nobody showed up except for people on the committees who then reported back badly as if it were, you know, like some grand show and that was a lie and it was I absolutely agree with you. <laughs> it, 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 it 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 was okay, but now that that's said. And 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 I'm I'm as clear as I can, I, I can be because nobody wanted to come to it. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you that I talked to the community and people who want to go to it, and they said that it the location is wrong. The location should be near the actual community board, so that if we did some kind of event, you know, like by the community board and maybe closed off part of the street or did something, mm -hmm. you know, that's, you're going to have street traffic, mm -hmm. you know, and that it, it was just overblown and, you know, all those chairs were for nobody. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to spend money, then spend it on maybe get some tents or try to figure out something on that sidewalk in that general area 
you know, like make a little street fair, mm -hmm. you know, and then people are there already. You already got people. And if you do it on a Saturday, they're going to be there because they're going to be doing their shopping. Mm -hmm. So, so, so if that's the case, then yes, this is the kind of time when you need to go to the police department and find out what part of the, you know, either the front of the building or that side of that building, mm -hmm. you know, where the police will let you shut off the street for a couple of hours. Well, my suggestion always had been to move it to the other side of the uh, community body area. Mm, I suggested they do it at the Board of Education facility in Ontario Avenue. Uh, also, in thinking about it, we could also, I think, Wingate Park, maybe uh, this is another place we could do it. And, and uh, if, let's say, you could find a big enough street, I think they have a street enough where we could close the place for a couple of hours or two, three hours and have it also because. I mean, the two instead of just one block party, you take a couple of blocks and do it. And I think those ideas are pretty. For me, that's well taken. So that way, it will be. It could be somewhere in the center, and we. Will, I, I don't see the difficulty in doing that instead of just doing it at the the uh, the one with McNair Park. So okay, uh, Nicholas, to me, especially the. East part of this district, there's hardly anything going on over there. There's hardly any activity. I'm a strong advocate to see to, for for that suggestion in the idea you have. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. my but my my suggestion to you is my, my amendment to your suggestion is that we think small and not go big. Like let us grow into the event. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody likes an event that you know, it was all grandiose and nobody's there, then you feel like you've been to the wrong event. But okay. if you, you know, it's like, you know, in public relations, if you don't think you're going to have a big group, get a small room. Mm -hmm. Then everybody's in the room and they think that they're at the right party. Right, right. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you're, you know, 12 people in a in an auditorium where you feel like you've made a, you've made a mistake. Mm -hmm. So, like, let's look for, you know, people who do this you know, looking in this neighborhood, because this is not, that's not my bailiwick, but somewhere that's a smaller area, not a big area, mm -hmm. where we can have it where you're going to get some foot traffic. And, you know, okay, I'm done. No, no, I, I, I agree with Julia. Um, I, me personally, I was thinking of, you know, having very close to the community board, right? What about um Carroll Street, which is Carroll and Nostrand, you know, in front of Medgavers, um oh. junior, the, the the high school, you know, that area because you have you have traffic coming up Nostrand, going down Nostrand, you know, in that general area, right? We have a lot so of traffic. That block, that block between Nostrand and Rogers in front of the original Medgavers uh, building. Yeah, but I don't even think the whole block. You know what I mean? Probably, you know, the length of the, the high school. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Before you get... I, I really don't think we need the whole block because, you know, a, a, again, to underline Julia's point, if we have 12 people in our auditorium, like we went to the party. So, you know, we, we could do it in you know, front of the high school, see how good that, you know, the response is and probably extend it in years to come. But it should be close to the community board Mm -hmm. Right, which you know is a, a a foundation for us. We have a lot of traffic on Nostrand Avenue, and the reason I, you know I'm saying not on Nostrand Avenue because it might be difficult to get to the road closed because of the bus and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But we should be able to get Carroll Street closed. I you see what I'm saying? I think, I think it's a good, to me, it's a great idea. Go and endorse it, and I will bring it out to the community, to the executive board. I think it's a great idea. And go because you could get the same amount of uh, we I mean of uh, vendors and all that stuff within that right. that, that space. So you could right. do that. And yeah, everything right. the same activity could take place. And I, I told you. Okay. okay. And I, I think... we'll, then as a committee, let's make that recommendation. Okay. 
Okay, somebody make it as a motion so that I can write it down. All right, let's move to have the community, the resource fair, they like to call it, on mm -hmm. Carroll Street between Wilders and Nose Nine Ave. Carroll Street. Between, between Nostrand and Rogers. And it's a good place because you have the high school, you have the college, so you don't, I mean, there's not too many. You have a, a, a big swath where there's only institution, not houses, so you're not going to right, have yeah. convenience to many people if you block the environment. It's a block party. I'm mm -hmm. sure the people... Uh, uh, one other thing I could try to find out is there a block association with that, and then we will talk to them. And also, this is right around the corner from the office. We made the logistics very, mm -hmm. very easy to me. Mm -hmm. So we make that recommendation. Please let's write it down, Julia. As part of I am. I am. And and are do we have a time limit that we're looking at then? Well, the time is always the Saturday uh, before Memorial Weekend. Yeah, but no, no, time. no. But I mean, like, are we going from ten to the four? The time or... usually, the time is usually from ten to about two p.m. Mm -hmm. From ten to two, that you should do it. It's and a Saturday after. It's after a Saturday. The Let's see. Saturday. I'm sorry, Brenda. Say it again. After Memorial Day. Week. I thought it's usually before. No, I don't think so. Um, I think it's before because it's before I think it, has, because. it has to do with, the problem is is that it has we get into conflict in in conflict with people's graduation. Right. People June, keep telling me they can't 3rd, come. Wasn't it June third, the same day that Maple Street had an event? No, no, but originally it was all yes, the Brenda, time you're absolutely the Saturday, right. the Saturday after. Usually that's before that. That was always the plan. Remember you left Maple Street and went right, up. right. Yeah, Naima I mean, and Naima and I Naima, went, you we went from went. yours to we went yeah. to the other event. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So right. Brenda's right. Brenda's You're right, right. Brenda. You're right. <laughs> you so it's after. So but, well it's after okay, the Saturday after Memorial Day. Yeah. Okay. Now you if you want it the Saturday before Memorial Day, that's fine. But that's, that's not what it was. Okay, it was a Saturday after. In this yes. year, it will be June the uh, it will be June the first. Is that Father's Day? No, the next day would be Father's Day. Right? Father's Day is the middle of the. the but month. it's the middle. I, uh, okay. okay. So the all these the dates are still fluid. Everything is still fluid, but I think uh, we could suggest that date. Okay. Saturday after November no, weekend will be June first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's keep it moving. We're good. Let's keep it moving. Uh, the next thing is a board-wide conference for our community board of Park and Recreation Committee for spring 2024. This is a project we're working on. I can share with you some information on this. And this was, uh, this is in the process. The idea, the, the projected time should be mid-May. Uh, let me see what is that. Hold on one second. I'm going to stop sharing and get the information. Just give me a minute. Should have had it already set up. Come on, Nicholas. No, because I just wanted to talk about it. Uh, but I just remember I just got a document about it, and I, I will be. Uh, so, uh, meanwhile, let me talk a little bit about that. The, uh, the idea is to get all the boards in Brooklyn to meet 
and at least every two years. And, uh, and find a place for to share that part. Okay. All right, this is what's being proposed. So let me share my screen again. So you guys are the first people that are seeing this. Uh, anybody see my screen now? Okay. This is a biannual conference of Brooklyn Parks Recreation CB Community Board Committees. The proposed theme is to support neighborhood and play clans through volunteerism and activism. And uh, why 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 are we 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 acknowledging public officials? Why don't we just do the work? Uh, well, the planning of it, it's going to be a bold white planning. So it's not just this community board that's trying to plan it. Community board 17 is going to go in the board after community board 8, but I'm just giving you guys a preview. This is what's being proposed. So okay. because we would like to have people from the mayor's office on down and the board president to come and present, the chair of the uh, committee of the city council of park of recreation. So this is what's being discussed. I just wanted to Float this what idea what is your what is your what do we walk away with? If I spent my Saturday afternoon, what do I get? Out? What do you walk away with is to find out what each um different community what are doing in their side of town in terms of taking care of their parks, making the parks available, share information, and all that other stuff. And this is a suggestion to do that every two years. Get an update from the whole commissioner. What what project that's going on? What uh, funding is available? And also, we will invite some of the organization like uh, New York for Parks, people that are fighting for parks, because one of the things we see is that uh, the, the parks that are the best one they usually will have uh, a organization like uh, Wingate Park Alliance or the Prospect Park Alliance or, or Friends of Wingate. So those are find the strategy to support and uh, and keep the box going. So that's the idea. So people can share information and do a conference and get an idea of what's happening. This is what's being proposed. So I just wanted to just say this. this is, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, has this been done before? This is something that's being tried for the first. So it's a proposal at this point. So. Consultation, I'm going to be making consultation on two or three community board and if they want to start planning that and then find a way for to contact all the community within Brooklyn and have that. The suggestion would be this is something that could take place in a location like Prospect Park, they have some of the space and now um, and so on and so forth. But I'm just going to share that with your committee as an activity that we are trying to put together. Why don't you get a subcommittee? and then get back to us. Well, I will do that. I just wanted to tell, throw that idea to you because I did mention it to the executive board, but this part is giving a little more specifics. So the suggestion is to set up a subcommittee to do that. So let's vote on that and, uh, and go from there. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so. Okay. What do we do next? Let me go back to the so end. so Nicholas. Can I just ask you because I'm not really understanding um, what we take away from this. Mm -hmm. It just seems like having something like that without focusing that on CB nine issues first seems a bit premature. But but you know, I, I'm I'm happy to vote on it as others will as well, but I'm just not trying, not really understanding kind of the, the purpose of this. I think that um, as we talked about the community fair and, and Julia's ideas about moving it and others, I mean, that made some sense to me because um, um, 
I've attended fairs in the past and I still really thought that the takeaway was not that great. So I think that even having it closer to the community board makes sense. But this, I, I just, I'm kind of at a loss as to like, why, why are we doing this? Why are we proposing this? Well, it's to find out what's, what else is happening in Brooklyn in terms of this kind of work. That's primarily you know, it. Get a chance what, to, to share information and share best practices. If they have a particular situation, this is how they dealt with it and so on and so forth. And at the same time, we get the information from the cities that what's happening within parks in terms of funding, what project that's being taken care of and so on and so forth. So that's basically the Nicholas, process. this is... Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm I'm sorry. Can I speak? Because I'm 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 exuberant and I'm trying not to be impolite. This can this information can be gathered in another way, and the way that you gather this information is if you are interested in what other community board parks and recreation people are doing, mm -hmm. you call up CBA. And you say, when's your parks and recreation meeting? And you go to their meeting. If that is of interest to you. Because if you want to find out what Prospect Park Alliance is doing, you go to Park, Prospect Park Alliance meeting. To ask the elected officials who are non-responsive in the first place for me to now get dressed on a Saturday, fully clothed, just for them to say, oh, your council person is not able to attend. I was able to attend, and you can bet your bottom dollar that they're not going to attend, or they're going to send some intern or somebody to look at you, okay? I don't need to be looked at by interns, okay? Mm -hmm. If I'm interested in what some other community is doing, go to their meeting and find out, because then you're going to hear the real deal, okay? Because I'm not necessarily going to show up and maybe I do a lot of work on this committee, but I got other things to do. If you're interested, go to their meetings and find out. This is, as, as Celeste says, this is really premature because if you went to each and every meeting, then you'd find out who you wanted to talk to because the, some of these people aren't doing anything at all. Okay, then That's you know who, who you want to see. And then maybe all you want to do is DB2, Brooklyn, what's that? Brooklyn Heights. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to just deal with Brooklyn Heights. CB9 and Brooklyn Heights are going to do a little something or kind of have a concept together because they're actually doing something. And then you suss out who you want to actually do business with because this business-wide, this is playing with fancy paper, okay? This is playing with paper. And I don't mean to be disrespectful to your great effort, because I do see that you put in a great deal of effort on this. But now upon bringing it to the com the committee, my suggestion is it's way premature. Mm -hmm. And I'm very unclear on what information you're going to get other than everybody's going to tell you the brightest story. Oh, yeah, we're doing it all. Oh, we're doing nice stuff. But if you went to their meetings, then you'd find out what problems they're having. And you'd see them with the boots on the ground. Okay. I'm done. All right. Well, now, go ahead. You raise your hand. Yeah. I, I, I get the idea. And going from meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting is a very onerous task. So having everybody in one place would be the way you, you know, conceivably the way you find out what each one of these different parks and rec committees all over are doing. And so that you're not constantly reinventing the wheel. If someone in another community board has a great idea and it's working, then you want to know about it. You want to adopt that idea. If there are other things that they're doing in various different community boards, that we could do in ours, it would be great to find out so that we too can be more effective. But I, I'm i not sure, you know, the best way to go about doing it, but that's how I see the whole idea of having this um, meeting of all the different parks and rec committees. 
but I'm thinking it, it might not be uh, prudent to have all the committees there, but having all the chairpersons of the committees talk okay. to one another and share information about what are the, the key things that are being accomplished by their committee. That way you perhaps get a more honed down view of what's going on. I don't know how realistic or true, honest they would be, but I I see, you know, I think I'm getting the idea of where you're going with this. And going from meeting to meeting, I think is is never gonna be possible. Right. But pulling every all the chairpersons yeah, together. David, you have your hands up. Yeah, my, my question is, um, is Community Board 9 the only community board that um, is on YouTube or are the other community boards meetings on uh, YouTube? Oh, yes, they are actually, if you part of the mandate, part of the city charter require you have some kind of a recording of, available for, uh, for the committee. At one time, they would suggest that you get one of those public access, but we you to make life a little easier. Everybody has to find a way to publicize whatever their meeting desire is available for the people to see. Because when we get evaluated, that's one of the things they looked at. Is a recording of the meetings that happen in each community board. That's part of that applies to every community board. So I was, I'm making an assumption, but I don't know. I think most of the community by now should have some kind of a YouTube channel. If not, they have to have a way of, of broadcasting. Mm -hmm. well, you know, and and since, this is one of the things the community that, board was that, that for meetings. at one time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, probably, you know, as Brenda was saying, going to these meetings, individual meetings is, you know, I mean, tiresome, probably, you know, we could, you know, look at it at, on the Zoom channels and find out what they're doing, you know, and if it's, as, you know, as Brenda was saying, it's some good practice and it's something that's working, you know, we could adopt it instead of having everybody sitting down in one place and, you know, some of these guys wouldn't come or whatever, whatever, you know, but, you could sit and look at the meetings via Zoom. But I think this is really a conference for the heads of the uh, community. Agreed, agreed, and agreed, I think, agreed. And I think that's what it should be. I, that's the way I think it's being looked at. Um, okay. So. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea, a great way to look at it for right. the heads to come together. And it's not, you can do whatever you want, but, you know, to discuss things, but also what was accomplished. Yeah. What, right. They, actually point to and say this we got done one right like for, i know but, what you're saying yeah for example one uh, uh, one community board put a park together in bronzeville and they got a lot of private money to get that park done i would love to see what they do to get that right yeah. right this is an opportunity to see that so right. i want to yeah. float this by the committee i'm also i'm uh, uh I'm in conversation with Community Board 17. I'm going to try to reach a conversation with Community Board 8, present the idea and see what, what we can do. But I must say, mm -hmm. this is something you do not every year, but every two years. Right. So that will give you enough space in between to get things done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great idea to have the ongoing connection between mm -hmm. you know, yourself or us as a representative for this committee. Right. And other parts committees around because if they're doing something that's working mm -hmm. and then we should know about it and perhaps adopt some similar practices. Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now uh we're coming to the close. Uh Julia, you want to give us a list of the stuff we gotta vote on now? Okay, hold on, let's see. So we're gonna do each of the time and then uh, we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bear with me. The first thing we're to vote on is the motion for um, about Brooklyn Museum to meet one day as a group and then meet another day as a regular scheduled meeting. So- I'm gonna make a motion. 
Somebody move, make the motion. I make the motion that we meet on a regular meeting day mm -hmm. once and then we gather together at the Brooklyn Museum on Saturday, <laughs> February 10th, with our free tickets <laughs> and our plus one to see <laughs> to see uh Swiss Beats and Alicia's exhibit as well as the Spike Lee. The Spike Lee. Okay. 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 Uh I, Alicia I, Keys. I your motion. <laughs> Alicia Keys, Swiss Beats, and Spike Lee. Lee, right. Yeah, we can what time, get it. What time does the museum close on Saturdays? Six o'clock. Every it's six o'clock every every okay, all right. Eleven to six. It's, okay, cool. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that we need a time in that motion? Wait, 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 before we go this, is that one of those? First what Saturday. Is it called first Saturday, because I don't well, go not, first not Saturday. On the, if it's the eighth or the if it's the tenth, then it's not a first Saturday. It's Saturday. Uh, okay. Saturday okay. Is, uh, is I, I, okay. Okay. Just want to add, we can also change our meeting date if you want to make that meeting oh. on Saturday. If we all agree, so we're not stuck to Thursday. Oh. oh. Okay. That's a thought. Yeah. Well, that was for discussion whether you you all would like to actually meet, you know, okay, Saturday so afternoon we, as opposed to Thursday evening. Right? Yeah, yeah, we could meet at two o'clock or three o'clock, and then I mean, after the meeting, go to the um the exhibit, the exhibits. We can meet at the meeting. Oh, could we can have a meeting first and then go over to the museum? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Brenda, you take that as an amend? Brenda, will you take that as a friendly amendment? The friendly amendment is to meet first and then attend the go to the museum. Yeah. Yes. As long as the meeting is kept to the the succinct time limits. <laughs> yes. Oh, you know, I try. I don't know. I don't like long meeting. I try to make it as quickly as we can. Believe me. Brenda, don't yes. want to so miss. We can continue talking as we walk around the museum. So I'll accept. No, because I cannot take. <laughs> I cannot take minutes walking around now. Okay. Well, okay. So, plus, okay. So, if wait, 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 wait. meeting, it has to be recorded also. So oh, right, take right, that right. in mind. Okay. Well, and, but that and, doesn't mean we can't talk afterwards. That's right. We could talk afterwards. Okay. Right. So the motion now reads: uh, motion for a Brooklyn Museum meeting one day as a group, and to meet. Um. At, okay. It's to meet February first. 10th. February 10th, first to, to have a meet, a regularly scheduled meeting on a Saturday. And then after the meeting, as a group, go to see um, the Alicia Keys Squiz Beats. Or just go and, to the museum. You guys can, once museum. we're there, you can go see whatever you want. So yeah, you okay, and go to the museum. Go to the Brooklyn Museum. <laughs> okay, with our plus With one. our free tickets. Uh, with our free tickets, okay. <laughs> all okay, all in fit. Okay, uh, Nicholas, you have to call it now. All right, all right. Yeah, well, I'm looking for a second. Is there a second? Yes, second. David <laughs> seconded. Okay, both of have been that. seconded. Okay, all in favor, notify by saying hi. Aye. 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 All opposed. Abstentions. Any abstention? Okay. Acclamation. Carry unanimously. Okay. That's number one. Number okay. Two. Okay. So. Okay. So then the second motion is to vote on all people who have not been attending to be removed from the committee list. I'm looking for a motion. David, you can do this. Come on. Well, you know, my, my if you don't come, you can't stay. <laughs> you don't come against that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, can you make it as a motion, please? <laughs> motion to uh, recommend uh, that people motion to that people um, if you don't you, you don't attend. Did he just freeze? Yeah. Did I freeze or what's him? I think his his um 
thing for right up for them, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you didn't it, um something went wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Ilado. We don't, uh, your communication was cut a little short. Go ahead. Okay, my, my the motion should be, you know, f um, for people who don't attend the meetings regularly, they should be asked to not come back. So, no, no, no. That the, what we were asking for is that they're removed. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. I was trying to be politically correct. You know? No, it's not politically it can, correct. It be political. Should be the, the committee will comment that people who have not attended the meeting since the beginning of this year be removed, Should be removed. From, the, from the committee. Yeah, okay. All right. From the yeah. committee okay. And that we all we can do is have this suggested to the executive. The executive, no. right. just okay, cool. recommendation. <laughs> Right, yeah. And, All right. and those people, and we have the list of the people. Right, okay, good. Okay, you need a second. I second. Call okay. Mm -hmm. okay, Courtney seconded. Courtney. Mm -hmm. Moved and seconded. Okay, get your vote. Okay, now, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. Abstention. All right, motion passed unanimously. Okay. No opposition, no abstention. What's the okay. last one? Okay, we're, we got two more. Um, motion regarding the um, resources fair, that mm -hmm. the resources fair is moved to Carroll Street between Nostrand and Rogers. It is between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Saturday, Jan June 1. June 1st. Yeah, June 1st. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you Motion and part of the high school in Matavis College building. We, right, we, yeah. Motion to somebody make a motion. Come on, um, Courtney. You didn't get one. Come on. The last um, I think we're past discussion, but um, the only issue I have that I don't have a solution for is that we have had community members who are Jewish who um, mm -hmm. don't want it on Saturday. And I know Christian community members might be having, you know, religious activities on Sunday. Um, so I'm not sure what the solution is. I'm a little bit torn on that. Uh -huh. Okay. That's been uh, actually when this resource fair was first announced as part of the discussion is to alternate between Saturday and Sunday. So this is something that can be brought up again. So uh, because we want to see everybody. So why community. don't we do the vote on the location and right. then let the community board figure yeah. out what date? Okay. okay. Yeah. So, that's the location, I oh. think. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. I can move that the location uh, for the community fair be on Carroll Carroll Street between Rogers and Nostrand. That's right. That's okay. right. That's okay. It. Second. Second. Okay. Moved and second. Oh, okay. Get your vote. All in favor. That was second by Celeste, right? Yes. That's right. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. Abstention. Seeing none, motion carried. Unanimous. Okay, so Nicholas, when you take this to the community um, executive, the executive board. board, you have to tell yes. them that they have to figure out the date and that there's going to be a problem mm -hmm. with um, part of our community. Okay, right. the last um, the last motion is um, a vote on the borough wide conference regarding parks and recreation every two years um, and that a subcommittee be um, started to do this work. I move. I made the move. Is there a second that a subcommittee be established to look at a biennial conference of community boards? I actually can uh, make a motion. I'll make a motion mm -hmm. as, as read 
if I can get a second, we're we're out of here. Read the motion. The motion, um, as read, is I make a motion that there is a establishment of a subcommittee to um, explore borough-wide conference regarding parks and recreation for every two-year conference. I second. I'll second. Oh, go ahead, Courtney. Moved and second. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Notify by aye. saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're done. Ah, uh, seeing none, motion carry. Okay, we make some, I make a there, motion that we're out. No, are there any old business? Um, no, I can't think of anything. Are there new business? Okay, so how are we gonna do deal, deal with this February? Is it the February meeting? Oh, I think the, we passed the motion. So then uh, yes, so. let me work out. Let's see what the status, uh, the logistics is. Okay. I speak to the uh, chair and the uh, district manager, see how we could work that out. So I'll be meeting okay. on Saturday and see what other possibilities are. Okay. Oh, we, but we're going to do it on Zoom anyway, right? Yeah, we could do it on Zoom anyway. Right. So we could do it on Zoom and then we could just head it out. Yeah. Right. What we were hoping was that we would be provided a room by the museum to do it on Zoom, but uh, it doesn't look like that's possible. But we could do it on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those are the two options. We could Zoom mm -hmm. or we could, um, or, or see if we could get somebody to open up the community board because they don't work on Saturday. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, the community board, I think they open on Saturdays. Or... Yeah, they are. We'll need it. They are, they've done many events on Saturday. We could meet over there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because all they need to do, but but if we I've meet been in to person, activities at the no, no, no. no. But if we meet Saturday. in person, then somebody still has to open up a Zoom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. They still have to put it on Zoom because they have to yeah. put it on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. You have to record it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Move to adjourn. It's in order. Second. I I moved. To, I second. All in favor? Uh, it's been a great meeting, guys. Nobody okay. is opposed. Take care. Okay. Peace Have out. See you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night. 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 Good night.